Guys, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Uh, Sunday morning and yeah, nice lovely beautiful day again. It's another edition of the class show. So I just have to my car. I am quite tired today because what it is, I went to sleep real late, real late. And I mean late, real late. So <coughs> I had to wake up fresh this morning. And yeah, off to the studio. Nice lovely day as you can see. Woohoo, beautiful. Cool. Okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, uh, I just want to give you another tour. I know last week wasn't that good, so um, it was raining, but hopefully you can see a bit better now because the weather is absolutely beautiful out there. So, um, <coughs> what's on today's show? Today's actually the last show of uh, this month. Uh, we're both off next week and then we've got you know, the break for about a month or so. And then, inshallah, we'll be back after a month, I think five weeks to be precise. <coughs> Um, I also got, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> um, just stop coughing. Still got a little bit of cough, can't get, seem to get rid of this cough for about a week now. But, um, yeah, I'll finish I'll be okay on the radio, I'm not coughing too much. Um, today's show, what we're going to be talking about is, um, the recent headlines in the news regarding the guard band, so, uh, that should be quite interesting. Uh, playing the she's, you know, freestyling, news, this and that. Etc. Etc. You know, just the usual stuff. So let's see how it goes, inshallah. Um, I just need to step on a bit because I've got about a minute left to get to the studio. So remember, speeding's no good. So do not speed. Okay. Okay. Nearly there. The good thing is it's just like straight road, straight to the studio. So you know, it's not too, too, too bad. So I found some decent parking space. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. <coughs> Man, I need to run actually, you know that's it. Do one minute to go. I better get running. It's okay, it's still on anyway. That'll be okay. Um Shall I get in this space or shall I get in the other space? Oh, okay, tight parking. Hey, done it. Awesome, awesome. Maybe some now. Okay, can't get my CDs out. Um, CDs, CDs, struggle my CDs out. Okay, about run. Okay, put the CDs in there. Break this gift. Oh, this sir. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, I better run. The news on, news is on, I've got a few minutes left. This is me running, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run, run, run. Gosh, I'm so lax today. One, okay, just one, two, four. Okay, I'm in a real rush today. Right. Oops, not good. Good cow, just by the time I get to this thing. Yeah, out of ten consumers questioned in a new study say the rising cost of food is causing them stress. According to which, a third of shoppers are struggling to feed themselves or their family, and 60% worry about how they'll manage future spending if food costs continue to rise. And the 65th Annual Emmy Awards will be held okay, in Los Angeles two, this three. evening. How I Met Your Mother star, Neil Patrick Harris, will return for a second time to host the show. That's the latest. I'm Kelly Withers.
Um, there we go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa Allah. The Prophet Muhammad. Ya Rabbi. Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, may God bless him and give him peace, taught us. Utlubu al ilm. The Prophet Muhammad, may God. Allah. 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 Okay. Panic here. Panic's over. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sunday morning, Sunday, September 22nd, 2013, four minutes past ten. So love this track. Nazil Azami is called Allahu Allah. Beautiful track. Okay, at least I'm all set up now, ready to go. Um, just went to Shahid. Shahid's running a bit late, so I should be in in a second. So yes, welcome to another edition of Ikra Show. This is GFM 96.6 and I'll see you in a bit. Oh wow, that's good. So, uh, How many miles was it? It's about 13.1 miles. 13.1 miles, it? Yeah. Whoa. It was, uh, it was really nice, you know. You know when you're, um, when you go into a city centre yeah. and you just walk around as you do normally. When you do a marathon or, or run, you end up going through areas which you never thought you'd see. Yeah, scenic routes you know, and all, yeah. Scenic routes and things like that. So it's pretty good actually, you know, just running across, you know, and, you know, enjoying the atmosphere, you know, there's mm. a lot of people there running with you, you know, it's nice. Which city? It was Chandler, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Chandler. So it must have closed off all the roads, isn't it? Mm. Did you get soaked, don't you think? Oh, yeah. it was raining. It was really <laughs> bad. But the thing was, is that everybody else was doing the same thing as well. Everyone yeah. else was running, so you thought, you know what, even if it's raining, it's not so bad. Mm. You know, everyone else is doing it, no one yeah. else is complaining. So let's just go ahead. Oh, that's really good, yeah. It kind of reminded me of uh, when I did Umrah. You know, when you do the when you do the Tawaf, when you do, you know... Safa Marwa, yeah. Safa yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everybody else is doing it, you know. Mm. Young, old, young, old, people of different nationalities, people who are like the same world who aren't able to do it properly, yeah. in wheelchair. They all go ahead and do it. They don't complain. Exactly, yeah. Mm. You know, they just go ahead and do it. Mm. You know, and they're having a good time. Did you have to train that prior to that or something? I mean, 13 miles in yeah, one and a half hours. Do. Yeah, yeah, I kind of, I should have done, I think. I kind of trained in the last two weeks, which is all I'd recommend, but you know, that's me. Um, Last minute. But yeah, it was it was pretty good going there. It was tough going. I think um, after the fine, after the first ten miles, your well, first eight miles, you're fine, and it comes to the tenth to twelfth mile, 
and you're like really struck because you're thinking, you know, fatigue setting in. But, you know, you just keep praying, making the last one line, you're like, I can do this, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's good fun then. So it's the first time you've done a marathon? Or? First time I've done a marathon, yeah. You're going to do it again next year, yeah? Inshallah, Inshallah. I'm going to try and get something up going. Awesome. Did you have like a running buddy with you or anything like that just to keep you company or just... Um, Not I really. Know. I just had some headphones, just listened to some radio yeah. and machines <laughs> and stuff really. That keep you going, it. yeah. And um, I had a, a GPS watch which mm. told me how many miles I was doing along the way. Oh, well, that's good, yeah. And, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. Uh, I re- it's good. To, I think. Um, yeah, I, I definitely. I think you should do it next next time. You know, do, there's Gloucester one coming up. Oh, is that a Gloucester one? Yeah, yeah. There's a Gloucester one. You know. Ah, interesting. Mm. I was talking with some of the guys actually about having like a GFM 10K as well. That'd be good. Yeah. You know? Going around Gloucester, so yeah. 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 One way of supporting the station as well. That's it. Yeah, something like that. So uh, that would be cool. That should be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to that. Is that. Apart from that, how's how's everything else been? Yeah. Well, uh, very well, very well. It's uh, it's been quite a busy week, quite an active week in the headlines, hasn't it? Yeah, very active as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, to be picking uh, up on some of the stories later on as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We've been picking up on that. And Carl, uh, who was on trial for yeah. um, was it witness intimidation? Yes, yes, that's something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was something like that, and basically the judge. Um, it was part of the case where they needed to see her face, mm. but again, obviously, arguments were placed that you know, obviously, it's part of her religion, religious beliefs to express herself, so forth. Um, you know, to keep the nikah, to keep the nikah on, yeah. and therefore, it was decided that based that she would be allowed to show up to reveal her face to the judge and to the jurors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's caused quite a lot of uh, content. Amongst the community, everybody in the whole UK, including the legal communities, they well, you know, this is not fair, it shouldn't happen, so... Yeah. Legally, are you obliged to take the nikab off or something if you're in a court case? I mean, you should. Do. You should I do, think, yeah. well, this is the thing, it's coming up for guidance. I mean, what this judge said, yeah. I mean, he tackled it. So, he's saying that in front of the judge and jurors, then yes. Mm. Um, and then and all, sort of, all sort of stories come up, like NHS banning someone in Bradford as well, banning doctors from wearing the veil from seeing the patients as well. Did you hear about that as well? I... Yeah, apparently, I think, I'm not sure, don't call me that, but it might be in Bradford, I think, uh, where, you know, where female doctors, uh, where, where oh. NHS actually banned the female doctors from wearing the veil in front of the patients. See. That came out. I don't know whether this was a, this is something that's happened from quite a while ago, it's just been picked up recently as well. But it's just the whole thing that kicked off actually, didn't you know, this whole uh, debate about um, the crowd being banned as well actually. Um, I don't know, what do you reckon? Do you reckon it'll come to that stage where... I don't think it'll come, yeah. I don't think, you know, where uh, at some point society is, going to have, is having this discussion yeah. about what circumstances the Nikar will be, will or will not be appropriate. I think the gov- obviously the government don't want to go too much into it because it's going to seem like they're infringing, they're telling a religion how it must practice, yeah. telling somehow a religion must be practiced. But I think at some point though, they're going, this situation, it's good that we're having this debate, yeah. because the society is going to say, well look, I think in these circumstances, it would or would not be appropriate. Hmm. So they're having these debates now. Yeah. I don't think it should be, I, I mean, it's up to, it's up to, you know, each individual and don't the station yeah. intervene in that. You know, I think, yeah. well, these are, these are issues though, isn't it? You know, yeah, we're, living happen, in, yeah. we're living in, in the UK. Mm, exactly, yeah. You know? So. Yeah. It'd be interesting actually, you know, if anyone, anyone actually out there listening that wears a niqab or something, you know, what's your views on that? You know, just you know, email us, um, studio.fm.com, um, if you want to mention it give your views or opinions about it or you can ring it in 01452546400 or you can text us on 6066 uh, with your messages you know I mean, what do you think of it um, you might be wearing niqab um, do you feel you know since since all this debate has kicked off over the last week or so have you have you kind of felt yourself a bit like you know when walking on the street maybe you know people are kind of looking at you a bit more rather than before all this kicked off or you know 
I mean, it's, it's be good to hear, hear your thoughts and opinions. Uh, let us know, inshallah. Um, Mind you, though, France has banned the veil as well, isn't it? That's been yeah. for a while, isn't it? That's but it, yeah. They, they banned the veil and um, they're fine. Where the veil. There was this Muslim businessman who set up this fund yeah. to basically pay for. Bail them out, yeah. Mm. You know, so it's uh, it's a debate, really. It's it's interesting. Let's we'll, we'll see how things are developing. Yeah. But for France, are we going to have a? Are we going to be in a situation like France? I, I don't think so. I wouldn't like to be in, in, in the UK when we ban people mm. for, for what they wear. Yeah. It doesn't help us of all these tabloids, right wing tabloid newspapers just kind of inflaming the situation even more as well, isn't it? You know, from the usual uh, right wing, never mention their names actually, but I'm sure we all know um, if you're referring to, you know, just literally just slamming them in the gap, criticizing the gap, and all that sort of stuff. So, it's just, the thing, though, there's, yeah. a, there's a difference to be had between those who are actually slamming the religion and those who are just saying, well, I just don't. I have nothing against the religion, but yeah. it's just yeah. it's just, just the veil. Mm. Um, because some yeah, people are saying, some people are saying, um, well, you know, these people who are wearing the veil, it's being forced on them. Yeah, yeah. You know. Of course, isn't it? Yeah. Which you know, which the majority of us agree that it's clearly not the case. Somebody who wants to choose, make a yeah. choice to wear it, and they would do so. It's their own choice, because knowing obviously those you know where they are face considerable difficulty, you know in you know in the UK. Yeah. So it's clearly a strong choice that a person's got to make. Yeah, yeah. You mm. know, in the in the UK. So I wouldn't see if they, if they I would if anybody was forced into it. I don't think they would want to go through all that. You know, exactly. Yeah. To, to put that put that on unless it was their choice. To be fair, I, I, you know, we we we're, li we're living in this country. So I mean. Yeah. If, you might, you might hear stories of back, you know, back in other countries where people have actually been forced to wear niqab, but the UK um, doubt it very much, I think, you know. The majority, you know, because I've been reading all these internet websites and all those sorts of places, the majority of people who's actually um, talking about niqab and saying, you know, they're, they're just wearing it, wearing it out of the free will and not being forced to anything whatsoever. So, yeah, again, there's a bit of, um, a bit of taboo about it, actually. Um, I've actually just found the article here. It says secret ban on face veils for staff at 17 hospitals. At least 17 NHS hospitals throughout the UK have banned frontline staff from wearing the veil. And so, yeah, it seems it's kind of like a secret ban, ban that's been going on for a while, actually. Uh, it's an investigation by the by, uh, well-known newspaper has found that 17 NHS hospitals across five NHS, NHS trusts which have already quietly instituted a ban on frontline staff wearing their niqab while in contact uh, with patients. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it looks like um, this little thing here is actually uh, some close to um, A health minister has ordered a review on all current health care guidance on the issue and asked clinical regulators to draw up clear rules to ban the wearing of their face veiled by healthcare staff while they are in contact uh, by the patients. Um, he told the newspaper, I am proud of a rich ethnic diversity of our healthcare groups and support appropriate religious and cultural freedoms. But a vital part of the good patient care is effective verbal and non-verbal communication. Being unable to see a healthcare professional's face can be a barrier to a good and empathetic communication with patients and their families. This is why I'm writing to all healthcare regulators to ask them to look into this matter and to review the professional regulations to ensure that there is always appropriate face-to-face -face contact between healthcare uh, professionals and their patients. So, yeah, it, it looks like um, you know, NHS staff, uh, well, quite a few NHS institutions will be banned there, things like that. Would you say it's probably the same, right, for like teaching staff as well? I mean, if you see a teacher as well, she's teaching young kids. Well, there was a there was a nursery um, there was a teacher, a nursery teacher, yeah. who brought a case for I believe it was employment discrimination on the basis that she was dismissed because she had a she's wearing a face like yeah, yeah. teaching nursery kids and she wanted to keep it on. Yeah. Um, but that case unfortunately was thrown was not decided in her favour. Uh, yeah. It was decided effectively. It was decided that um, 
those wearing the vet, you know, the niqab, that in such a position such as teaching and teaching young kids, the kids need to see the face. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah, the kids need to see the face in order to to progress. You mm. know, for them to to effectively engage and study properly. So therefore, you know. It's, yeah. um, so yeah. What's the, what's the situation here in um, within our, for example, in some of the Islamic schools? Is it is you know, is teaching taking place with the little kids, youngsters? Um, I think I think normally with it depends with youngsters. If it's like you know, it's not necessary. It's not you know, original uh, niqab is not for us. You know, it's not like necessary, like necessary, necessary, necessary to do it. Actually. Okay. It's not like, you know, you've got things like salat is fathers and lots of stuff which you have to do. But niqab isn't fathers actually. So it's not like a necessity for women to think. And um, I think even with little kids as well, it's not necessary to do niqab. Do you know what I mean? If they're like, you know, seven, eight, nine year olds, for example, you know, I, I probably, you know, it's, it's not necessary to do niqab, I suppose, isn't it? In front of the parents or fathers, I mean, yes, but um, in front of the youngsters, you know, I don't I think it's probably. To do, actually. Obviously, if the students were kind of a bit older, like, you know, reached the um, age of over maturity, puberty, then probably, yeah, you can understand, actually. But um, doing niqab for youngsters, 10 year olds, 11 year olds, you know, you probably see a point from you know, where people are coming from. Sort of thing. Interesting. Because this is, well, I think this is the major part of it here is the whole thing about it being forced. Well, there's yeah. two aspects. First of all, yeah, in terms of practical context, uh, in like teaching, book, doing out here, and all yeah. life. That's what a lot of people are focusing on yeah, yeah. because of the, the whole matter coming before the courts. Yeah. And then you've got the uh, other aspect, which is whether it's being for, whether it's being forced. Because some people are saying, "Oh well, um, when it's accordingly in the papers, yeah. they say, oh, you know, the male or are, are, are forcing on, which is completely ridiculous." Yeah, yeah. You know? Interesting comments actually here, yeah, I'm just reading. Um, should Muslim women who wear a niqab show their faces when dealing with their patients? Uh, someone responded is, when teaching, uh, you're only doing it with words and gestures. When dealing with patients, I don't need either, and that's both in a female environment. Um, with patients, it's important to have some sort of connection. It makes them feel more at ease. And imagine someone who's hallucinated for whatever reason, maybe accidentally ate the wrong mushroom or something. I really doubt the niqab will be able to calm them down. Um, so, so I think the, the main argument is people are saying, you know, wearing a niqab. For example, if you're a doctor, you know, and you're treating a, a male patient, for example, you know, having a niqab on, you kind of find think, think, think like it's like a barrier or something. If you know what I mean, you know, I, I think that's one of the main reasons why um, the NHS are kicking uh, kicking a bit of fuss about it because you know, obviously, because it's a patient-doctor relationship, obviously, you need to have good communication uh, within each other, and if you've got something in between. Kind of causes like a barrier of communication. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be interesting to actually hear what people's uh, views are on this. Actually, uh, if you've got any views or opinions about anything, uh, let us know. Drop us an email, uh, studioacostfm.com, or you can um, give us a call if you want as well, 01452546400, or text us on 6006. Uh, uh, text costs 25 pence plus your uh, standard uh, cost. Okay. Um, let's go for an ad break quickly and then we'll carry on with the discussion. Don't miss all the action and excitement of American wrestling. Forcing students to wear the veil. Um, basically, what they're saying is that a lot of these Islamic schools, just like any other schools, they have their own dress code. Yeah. Right? Okay? So, you know, you have to, you know, wear your head, you know, wear your head, wear a headscarf, you know, wear a swap you know, so what they're saying is wear. You know, that some schools are forcing students to wear the veil. So um, that's kind of obviously added a bit of uh, fire to the, uh, a bit of fuel to the, to the debate. This week as well, um, the Sun also launched a campaign, um, Bani, calling for a campaign against the Nikab. Again, this was faced with a lot of ridicule by everybody, uh, by more or less the whole nation and those on Twitter and Facebook saying, it's, you go turn to page one, something like the famous tweet will be, turn to page one for the sun's view on um, on the niqab, turn to page three on what they think women should wear. So, uh, you know, again, that, that got destroyed quite quickly. Uh, it's been spread like wildfire. Well. Um, now, 
Okay, further on from that, um, there's been a, uh, a report that a man has had to appear in court over, over a mosque attack in Neath, South of Wales. Okay, obviously... It's a weak occurrence now, isn't it, yeah? I mean, we thought we would have seen the last of any mosque attacks, obviously since the uh, Lee Digby uh, murder, but clearly it's not the case. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, you know, many, many mosques, including one in Glossa, uh, has been subject to various attacks yeah. you know, go, uh, going forth, so it's, uh, it's, it, is, it is a shame. But the details of, the, of this particular instance is that the ma actually the matter went before court and the guy was uh, charged with racially aggravated criminal damage in relation to an attack. Um, basically, he was charged with assault causing actual bodily harm and charged with common assault. Um, so basically, he had he was arrested on an attack on Tottenham Mosque, okay, which left several of the windows smashed. It was defined as a hate crime and a second such attack in the past month. Obviously, in August, the mosque had several windows smashed during the night. The incident led to members of the local community pulling together to raise funds for the small mosque. So the case has now been sent to Swansea Crown Court to mm. be heard, yeah. and obviously, and the defendant will be, appear before the court for a preliminary hearing. So, so when it gets sent over to the Crown Court, it means it gets quite serious. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. so we'll uh, keep your eyes peeled uh, for that. Um, there was that thing in Leicester. Was it that week before? Yes. There's, yeah. there's also that thing in Leicester where um, Doctor. A Muslim doctor's family yeah. had um, all been basically perished in a fire, yeah. and um, yeah, it was really sad. it was really sad. It was quite sad. Uh, very sad. You know, he's, uh, he appeared outside the mosque. He was very humble. You know, he was very just straightforward and, mm. and humble. And yeah, it was yeah. just I think the whole nation just felt this sadness. Yeah, this is the thing that came out of um, news as well. So you know, you. Um, about him, because when you heard the news, you needed to take a flight back directly yeah. to back to the UK because it was flying from Dublin, wasn't it? Find the airline which um, which he was flying with decided to overcharge him just for just to change his flight. Did you hear about that one? No. That was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yes. And further on from that, that yeah. airline actually got a lot of rap. Oh yeah, yeah. About that, and so. Um, yeah, that and then what following on from yeah, so that and then obviously the the CEO yeah. just came out and saying, look, maybe we need to change our company's policies a bit because we're basically treating our customers like mugs. Yeah. So you know, let's let's resolve, resolve this issue. Yeah. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, it's and a couple that was of days ago, yeah. But you know, but the company are now reviewing their policy because basically it's now out on the press. Yeah. Well, he did get a refund as well, anyway, because. I think they wanted to overcharge him just about 160 quid just for like a one-way ticket. So like that, just from Dublin to... Uh, I don't know how much it is at the top of my head, but, you know, 160. Because he wanted to change his flight on really kind of Yeah, right now. Yeah, because um, uh, yeah, I remember basically they'd... Um, yeah, the CEO came, came out of the press and said, look, we can't be doing this. Yeah. You know, if we... If we you know, maybe if we, uh, if we change our policies a bit and treat our customers a bit better, then maybe, you know... Yeah. It would be better. So yeah. you know, things would be better for us. So. I guess it kind of blown up completely off Twitter and Facebook as well. Yeah. Yeah. Did you also hear that apparently some people are claiming to that there's an, like some conmen are claiming to be collecting on behalf of this guy or this guy's family? And uh, which one? The the brother, uh, the, the doctor part. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, fraudulently claiming. So and he's come out and said, look, I'm look. If you want to collect from me, okay, fine. Collect through this avenue. Ignore everybody else. That's just sickening, really. It's like, so someone's actually going around, you know, claiming that he's collecting money on behalf of so and so. Yeah. Just to do fraud. That's, 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 it was, you know, words cannot really describe that shit. And it's like, it's quite, quite sickening. Really. So, so, um, just got another email for actually, um, from somebody called. Um, bloody blah, no, bloody blah. <laughs> um, bloody blah. Yeah, she's back, I think. Um, salam, salams, guys. Play classic Nasheeds, please, for today. 
since it's your last shot of the month. It's not our last shot of the month, I made a mistake earlier, so I'll be back next week, inshallah. Um, well, I didn't think you guys would know Urdu, surprised me there, mashallah. And yet, I'm not sure of Junai Jamshed. Then we're talking about Dunya Gay Musafir. Manzil Teri Kabar here means, hey traveller of this hey traveller of this world, grave is your destination. So, yeah. And it's a soapy. It's a soapy nasheed, rather. Soppy, soppy, I think. <laughs> yes, it's a soppy nasheed, rather. Um, regarding not allowed niqabi witness in court, I say being blind don't disqualify one from being a jury in court case, right? Being blind don't disqualify one from being a jury in the court case, right? That's interesting. So, a jury, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I say being blind don't disqualify one from being a jury in a court case, right? Then why is it any different to have a niqabi witness, provided Nikabi's identity was proved unchecked by female for the figure of court. Partial that too much. Was this... Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really following this story much, actually. Was this Nikabi? Was she part of a juror or was she a witness? Or She's a, a witness. She's a witness? Yeah. I think she was based... I think she she was part of the case, yeah. So, so what is this the same? You know, if you're being blind, does that disqualify you from being a juror in a court case? No, it doesn't. Being blind doesn't. So, as you say, why is it any different to having a witness? Mm. It's a different thing being a yeah. juror and a witness because, you know, but... I see the point, in it? I see what she's, yeah. actually, what she's saying, but at the same time, I think in the context of it, you've got to remember that this is someone who's being part of a criminal trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, the, much, yeah. Point, point taken, bloody blood. Yeah. And just carry on reading, it's all vote banking tactics by the politicians since elections are coming soon. Sorry? It's all vote banking tactics by the politicians since elections are coming soon. Yeah. So maybe, it is elections as soon as it's coming. So it is next. I don't know anyway, yeah. But, um, Lord, it's funny because you don't need to cover your face in front of kids. Um, I've replied to a sister who said it in infant school. It is better to remove the kids so that they kids can learn from your facial expression and you from your friends. And now from your friends, kind of. Yeah, good point. Uh, Jazakallah, a bloody bra. Nice to hear from you for a long time. Uh, keep, keep those emails coming for as well and hopefully uh, send some more emails through as well. Um, yeah, give us your views, false opinions, uh, what you think, you know, uh, joining the discussion with us. Uh, tweet us, uh, Facebook us, um, email us, get in contact with us and then we'll come on discussion, inshallah. Uh, this is the Cross Show. Uh, we're proudly sponsored by the Roses Theatre uh, in Tewksbury. I mean, myself, Shahid, and Sajid on there. We'll wait until that time. Yeah, inshallah. Cool. Uh, take a little break and then we'll come back. Yeah. Yes, inshallah. Stay tuned. Sorry, it's a little business on GFM. Phone 01452 525 or email advertise at gloucesterfm.com now. Forcing students to wear the veil. Um, basically, what they're saying is that a lot of these Islamic schools, just like any other schools, they have their own dress code. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you know you have to you know wear your head you know wear your head wear a headscarf you know wear a smart kameez you know so forth. And what they're saying is where you know that some schools are forcing students to wear the veil. So um, that's kind of obviously added a bit of uh, fire to the uh, a bit of fuel to the, to the debate. This week as well, um, The Sun also launched a campaign um, banning, calling for a campaign against the niqab. Again, this was faced with a lot of ridicule by everybody, uh, by more or less the whole nation, and those on Twitter and Facebook, saying, it's, you go turn to page one, something like, uh, the famous tweet will be, turn to page one for The Sun's view, on the niqab, turn to page three on what they think women should wear. So, uh, you know, again, that, that got destroyed quite quickly. Uh, it's been spread like wildfire. Well. Um, now, okay, fur further on from there, um, there's been a, uh, a report that a man has had to appear in court over, mo over a mosque attack in Neath, South of Wales. Obviously, it's, occurrence now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we thought we would have seen the last of any mosque attacks, obviously since the uh, Lee Digby uh, murder, but clearly it's not the case. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, you know, many mosques, many mosques, including one in Gloucester, uh, has been subject to various attacks. Yeah. 
you know, go, uh, going forward. So it's, uh, it's, it, is, it is a shame. But the details of, the, of this particular instance is that the ma actually the matter went before court and the guy was um, charged with racially aggravated criminal damage in relation to an attack. Um, basically, he was charged with assault causing actual bodily harm and charged with common assault. Um, so basically, he had he was arrested following an attack on Tottenham Mosque, okay, which left several of the windows smashed. It was defined as a hate crime and a second such attack in the past month. Obviously, in August, the mosque had several windows smashed during the night. The incident led to members of the local community pulling together to raise funds for the small mosque. So the case has now been sent to Swansea Crown Court to mm. be heard, yeah. and obviously, and the defendant will be, appear before the court for a preliminary hearing. So, so when it gets sent over to the Crown Court, it means it gets quite serious. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. so we'll uh, keep your eyes peeled uh, for that. Um, there was that thing in Leicester. It was that week before? Yes. There's, yeah. there's also that thing in Leicester where um, Doctor. Um, some doctor's family yeah. had um, all been basically perished in a fire, yeah. and um, yeah, it was really sa it was really sad. It was very sad. Uh, very sad. You know, he's, uh, he appeared outside the mosque. He was very humble. You know, he was very just straightforward and mm. humble. And, and yeah, it was yeah. just I think the whole nation just felt the sadness. Yeah, interesting thing that came out of um, news as well. So, you know, you. Um, about him, because when he heard the news, he needed to take the flight back directly yeah. to back to the UK because he was flying from Dublin, wasn't it? Find the airline which um, which he was flying with, decided to overcharge him just for just to change his flight. Did you hear about that one? No. That was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, air. yes. And further on from that, that yeah. airline actually got a lot of rap. Oh yeah, yeah. About that, and so. Um, yeah, that, and then what following on from, yeah, so that, and then obviously the, the CEO yeah. just came out saying, look, maybe we need to change our company's policies a bit because we're basically treating our customers like mugs. Yeah. So, you know, let's, let's resolve, resolve this issue. Yeah. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, it's and a couple sad, of days ago, yeah. But, you know, but the company are now reviewing their policy because basically it's now out on the press. Yeah. Well, he did get a refund as well, anyway, because I think they wanted to overcharge him just about 160 quid just for like a one-way ticket. So like that, just from Dublin to uh, I don't know how much it is to top of my head, but you know, 160 because he wanted to change his flight to another time. Yeah, right yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because I remember basically they, um, yeah, the CEO came out of the press and said, look, you can't be doing this. Yeah. You know, if we, if we, you know, maybe if we, uh, if we change our policies a bit and treat our customers a bit better. And maybe, you know, yeah. it would be better. So, yeah. you know, things would be better for us. So. At least it kind of blown up completely off Twitter and Facebook as well. Yeah. Yeah. Did you also hear that apparently some people are claiming to, that there's a, like some conmen are claiming to be collecting on behalf of this guy, or this guy's family? And uh, Which one? The, the, uh, the doctor? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, fraudulently claiming. So and he's come out and said, "Look, I'm look. If you want to collect from me, okay, fine. Collect through this avenue. Ignore everybody else." That's just sickening, really. It's like so. Someone's actually going around, you know, claiming that he's collecting money on behalf of so and so. Yeah. Just to do fraud with him. That's, that's, that's <laughs> you know, words cannot really describe that shit. And it's like it's quite quite sickening. Really. Um, just got another email for us. Yeah. Um, from somebody called um, Bloody Blah. No, Bloody Blah. <laughs> um, I remember Bloody Blah. Yeah, she's back, I think. Um, salam, glad, salams, guys. Play classic Nasheeds, please, for today, since this is your last show of the month. It's not our last show of the month, I made a mistake over here, so I'll be back next week, inshallah. Um, well, I didn't think you guys would know Urdu, surprise me there, mashallah. And yet, I'm Nasheed of Junaid Jamshed. Then we're talking about Dunya Ke Musafir. Manzil Teri Kabar Hai means, hey traveller of, hey, travel of this world. Grave is your destination. So, yeah. And it's a soapy, it's a soapy nasheed rather. Soppy, soppy I think. Yes, yeah, it's a soppy nasheed rather. Um, regarding not allowed niqabi witness in court, I say being blind don't disqualify one from being a jury in a court case, right? Being blind don't disqualify one from being a jury in the court case, right? That's interesting. Sorry, a juror, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I say being blind don't disqualify one from being a jury in a course aid, right? Then why is it any different to have a Nikabi witness, provided Nikabi's identity was proved unchecked by FEMA for the figure of court? Partial right too much? Was this... Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really following this story much. Actually. Was this Nikabi? Was she part of a juror or was she a witness? Or She's a, a witness. She's a witness? Yeah. I think she was based. I think she she was part of the case. Yeah, it was the nation. So, so what is this is saying? You know, if you're being blind, does that disqualify you from being a jury in a court case? No, it doesn't. Being blind doesn't. No. So she's saying, why is it any different to having a guardian witness? Mm. It's a different thing being a yeah. juror and a witness because you know. But I see the point in it. So I see what she's yeah. actually what she's saying. But at the same time, I think in the context of it, you've got to remember that this is someone who's being part of a criminal trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, much no, much, yeah. Point, point taken, bloody blood. Yeah. And just carry on reading, it's all vote banking tactics by the politicians since elections are coming soon. Sorry? It's all vote banking tactics by the politicians since elections are coming soon. Yeah. So maybe, is it elections as soon as it's coming? I don't know, anyway, yeah. But, um, Lord, it's funny because you don't need to cover your face in front of kids. Um, I've replied to a sister who said it in infant school. It is better to remove the kids so that the kids can learn from your facial expression and you from your movements. Um, mouth movements, by the way. Yeah, good point. Uh, Jazakallah, a bloody bra. Nice to hear from you for after a long time. Uh, keep, keep those emails coming for as well and hopefully uh, send some more emails through as well. Um, yeah, give us your views, false opinions, uh, what do you think, you know, uh, joining the discussion with us. Uh, tweet us, uh, Facebook us, um, email us, get in contact with us, and then we'll come on this session, inshallah. Uh, this is the Across Show. Uh, we're proudly sponsored by the Roses Theatre uh, in Tewksbury. I mean, myself, Shahid, and Saji on air all the way until 12 p.m., inshallah. Cool. Uh, take a little break, and then we'll come back. Yeah. Yes, inshallah. Stay tuned. So it's your business on GFM. Phone 01452 525 425 or email advertise at glossarfm.com now. <laughs> Now, oh, video logging. Yeah, the right. Oh, okay. Behind the scenes stuff. Last words on uh, on today's show. Fantastic. Uh, fantastic show. Really enjoyed it. Again, always good to, to be there with my co-host Sajid. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, interaction on the carb debate and the machines. Inshallah, stay tuned uh, for another great show next week. Ciao. Yeah, well, uh, so I come over on a final show. Um, good show today. Enjoy it. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, I'm out next week. Shahid's in next week to cover for you guys. So, inshallah, I'll do a fantastic job. I'm going to be back in November, inshallah. So, see you later. And from me, assalamu alaikum and ciao.